All right, it's Saturday on your view. Welcome to the show. I'm Veronica Dan Igboy. And as usual, I have my beautiful co host here with me. Good morning, ladies. It's another Saturday. Good morning. Topa, it's good to see you this morning. It's good to see you too. I'm happy to see myself. Abby? <laughs> I'm grateful to God for life. It's been a very, very busy week, very eventful week. Um, I run a real estate company, and one of the key parts of what we do is to empower people. So yesterday we had a realtor's hangout. Most of those that came, over 60 people that showed up wearing denim um, were people that very, most of them had not even been in real estate. Very few of them had been in real estate for like mm. one year or two years and it was about encouraging them because we live in an environment where everybody is talking about how bad things are and we cannot continue. We can't create solutions where we keep thinking things are bad. We need to focus on how we can create and become solutions. So mm. the community of my realtors are a community of empowered people who see opportunities in spite of challenges. Absolutely. That's a you good one. to join, follow us on social media. Absolutely. <laughs> Dami, how was your week? Very well, thank you. It's been very productive and I am in my grateful girl era. Just <laughs> thankful for how God has been wonderful and yeah. taking good care of me. Mm. Yeah. It's good to be grateful. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so finally, the wedding anniversary is here. Ah. Yay! <laughs> so you bling, girl. Congratulations. I was wondering. <laughs> we have to dress it. <laughs> so today is my wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Six years. Thank you wow. so much. And wow. I look back and I say, ah, now, now, six no, years no. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an experience. It's mm -hmm. been such a journey. I'm grateful to God for my husband. So let me take like 20 seconds to thank him publicly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sticking out with me. Thank you for understanding that sometimes some things can be in my head, <laughs> but you choose to always do right by God. I mm -hmm. really want to say thank you to you. Oh. Thank you for being such a good father, for oh. being such a good husband. God bless and you, I sir. Wish us 100, 100 more Amen. years to come. To come. I love enjoy so love and happiness. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Anyway. How are you doing? How was your week? My week was uh, productive yeah. and uh, a new experience having to handle some a lot of things right now. But I just want to rant this morning and it has to do with... Uh, the construction work on some of the roads, how it is taking such a long time, and it's toll it's taking on a lot of Lagosians, Lagos, Lagos motorists. Uh, look at the CMD road, it's still blocked up till Same. now. Uh, you look at um, the road, the express road around the um, new garage end, it's still work in progress, and it's taking such a long there time, and no the traffic... Safe. Is, is, is a lot. It's taking man hours, productive hours out of a lot of uh, Lagos motorists and uh, we hope that uh, the government will ensure that they break down the neck of these um, contractors working in those areas. Yes, we know the weather and all of it, but uh, something has to be done and has to be done as quickly as possible so that we can make judicious use of the time we have. Anyway, Let's quickly tell you now that life itself is a story, a recollection of events that shape one's journey on earth. Do you want to share parts of these stories with us on your view? This will enable people to share in your experience and learn valuable life lessons from them. You can also get to troubling questions and possible solutions to any challenge you're facing. You can do this anonymously or otherwise. Send such touching stories to us on your view at tvccommunications.tv. Tell us your story today. Share your burning issues with us on your view on TVC. And when we return, we'll look into the top stories of today. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
All right. Thank you for staying with us. It's time now to look at uh, the pages of the papers, uh, talking about the newspaper headlines. And we'll begin with the, the Nation newspaper. The major story here, Niger coup leaders rallies Burkina Faso, Mali against ECOWAS, formalized alliance in new decree, Hunter expels Nigerian, Nigerian rather, French, German ambassadors, ECOWAS to Hunter, it's not too late to reconsider your actions. And uh, another story here, War Bushi, my one year ordeal in prison custody. War Bushi, my one year ordeal in prison custody. He's sharing his story uh, for Nigerians to understand. And then you see the picture here Ami Berry's 22 officers killed in Niger attack. Uh, this uh, ceremony happened uh, yesterday in Abuja. It was a really emotional one. Now, how military should deal with calls for coup by ex Bayasa Milad. You find details of the story on page 12. Why I wept during my son's inauguration as governor, Oye Banji is speaking. Fandev Hills to Nubu over restoration of Niger Delta Ministry, collapsed Abuja building, miscreants turn heroes in rescue operation. How will fight corruption in judiciary? Uh, President Inubu is speaking. Who has what story? Okay, um, I would begin with uh, the headline that says, Collapsed Abuja Building, Miscreants Turn Heroes in Rescue Operation as Street Boys Save 28 Lives. Wow. So we can uh, recall that there was a building collapse in Abuja on Wednesday, and uh, many people around that area are not happy that the boys that did a lot of um, rescue operations are not getting a lot of credits for their efforts. They said um, they used their hands, torch, dagger, you know, to rescue. actually excavate. You know, go into excavate, go into the robbers and mm. bring people rescue out. People. And they were working hand in hand with the Federal Road Safety Corps uh, officials. So uh, the the guy is saying that's one of the men called, uh, let me get their names now, uh, Nasser, the two, so there are three of them, one that is a Megad, Nasser Mati, there's Yahaya Bilyamin, and there's Ashiro Masaka, and they said they had to do what they had to do because they saw that, you know, they had People to step help, in. Yeah. Exactly. And then they said that um, they would like to be helped. And if they can reach, if they can be reached on 0703195102. If anybody feels led to help to them, them and compensate <laughs> them for the work that they did, and to encourage them, them. that that's what okay. it is. Because uh, the government, the emergency management agencies, obviously could You're not right. have done that alone. Yes. Yes. These guys, mm -hmm. these guys had to come in to help to and this. if you see the rubble you knew that someone had to go in because at some point they were waiting for excavators to come into the rubble at the time it happened so it was till the following morning when the excavators came in and so these guys were the ones trying to rescue people two persons died in yeah. that incident about 35 persons were rescued and government has said that said that uh, they will take care of um, the hospital bills of those that were rescued Absolutely. at the end of the day. But I hope that people reach out to them now that you have mentioned. Bring him their name them. and the I number hope, his yes. papers. Yeah. I so hope I can. If you didn't get the number from her, please go and buy the nation the newspaper. newspaper. You'll find the number you there. By yourself. I want to take the story of how the president wants to reform the judiciary. Yeah. So the president received the NBA. Um, president, <laughs> uh, the Nigerian president received the president of the NBA, um, Yakubu Maikil, uh, in Abuja yesterday, Thursday. No, so in Abuja on Thursday, yesterday is not Thursday. Yesterday, yesterday was Friday. Friday. The, the NBA is having their 63rd um, conference. I don't know, it's not the word is not conference. Yeah, general, annual general conference yesterday. And they invited the president to join. So they had a meeting with him on Thursday to join them for the conference on Friday. Friday. And the president said that he understands the challenge with the judiciary. First, it is important to increase the remuneration 
four judges. He said that, and they understand that it's essential, it should be done quickly to fight corruption in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Also said they were going to look at the costs and consequences and that he had gotten a lot of information concerning this. He also, you know, um, in a very joking manner said that he's surrounded by lawyers. His chief of staff, Femi Batebi Amila, is a lawyer. He said his chief, the state chief of protocol, Victor Adeleke, is a lawyer. Mm. His principal private secretary, Prince Damilotu Adeyemi, is a lawyer. So the NBA is surrounded by a lot of lawyers. He understands the challenges the NBA is facing and he, he knows that the um, he pledges a comprehensive criminal justice reform in Nigeria, and I'm sure all the lawyers as well as judges are looking forward to the, the reforms reform. taking place immediately. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay, so I have this story talking about Ami Berry's uh, 22 officers killed in Niger attack. We recall that um, some weeks ago, some uh, military personnel were in Niger State to uh, carry out rescue operations and also attacks. Uh, about 36 of them were killed by uh, terrorists. And uh, in the process, uh, the military has buried them. Uh, yesterday, they buried 22 of these officers at the uh, cemetery in Abuja. And uh, it, if you saw the ceremony, it was quite a sad and sober one because uh, their families were present to pay their last respect. The defense minister for state was also dear Belu Matawali. And um, the army is saying that they would ensure that they revenge this death or avenge this death. And uh, my concern is how this will impact the morale of their colleagues who saw that these guys were in the line of duty, paid the ultimate price. Of course, they have that at the back of their minds that as you commit to be patriotic in delivering your services to the country, anything can happen. Uh, but then how we move forward yeah. from here. It's what we do it's to critical. the family. Yeah. It's very critical. How we honor them. Yeah. So our heart goes out to the family of all those 23 soldiers that died. And we do pray that well many Nigerians also support them, with, apart from okay. waiting for the military itself. Okay, so before we come to you, we need to quickly go on a commercial a break. When we return, we'll continue looking through the newspaper headlines. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first! Woo! OJ right here, 7 of 7, like you already know. Benga right here, 7 of 7, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> hmm. Mm. It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So, okay. so well, now one chance for me to. My, my first question. question Do you remember the names of the winners of that edition of Star Quest? Of course I do. Why uh, do you? And I, and, I, and, I, and I hate myself for this because I have this question for you. Final question. No. Where, where outside Nigeria and what year? I think you're the only one that can be wicked. I am thinking because I know back in the day. Don't think, oh, don't think. Answer my question quick, quick. You are thinking too much. I don't like it. The UK. Final answer. <laughs> okay. I said, God, God, please. Let me to perform outside Nigeria. Wait, 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 wait. And wait, wait, God wait. gave me a trip, a show in Ghana. <laughs> Drink, my friend, drink, 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 drink. I don't, I don't, I don't overthink this thing. See where I can. Yes, you overthink him. I would say you should catwalk. Uh, let's catwalk. <laughs> Where are we? No, that's not catwalking. That's, that's good. Do, that's, that's good walking. <laughs> Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're gonna have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review, 
and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of your view and I will be staring up our guests to get in depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Thank you for staying with us. We're still looking through the newspaper headlines. We're still on the front page of the Nation newspaper. And Toby, you have a yes. story on this. Yes, the real reason I was remanded in prison for one year, former Senator Nwoboshi said, and um, he said that, excuse me, he said that he was taken to court on account of diversion of funds but the Supreme Court, after one year back and forth in the courts, said that there was nothing called diversion of funds, so he wasn't supposed to have been arrested in the first place. However, the Court of Appeal went, the people that took him to court took the matter again to the Court of Appeal to ensure that, you know, he was going to um, get some form of justice. And he went on to say that, I didn't sign a check. I didn't sign an agreement. I'm not a director. I'm not a shareholder of the company. You said I'm the alter ego. So these were things that they said. They said he diverted some funds. He said that even the staff of the company that were there and had the, and were the signatories to the accounts were not reprimanded. And he went on to also say that the reason why he was remanded for one year was because they, they, didn't want him to participate in the last elections that took place. And then he went ahead also to now express the fact that a lot of people are, are also currently in prison in Nigeria for reasons that they can't even pinpoint with their fingers. They don't even have enough money to go through um, with a lawyer. And the article just basically expresses his, his grief mm. towards the matter, his bitterness now that he's out. But he feels that he shouldn't have even gone there in the first place. Mm. The, according to him, it is the work of his political detra detractor. Okay, so yes. they didn't want him to participate in the last, last election, elections. basically. Well, justice, yeah. justice. We still have a long road to justice yes. at the end of the day. Yeah. Anyway, let's move now to Saturday punch. Um, the major story here, governors disobey federal government on local government autonomy cripple council operations and some riders, most secretariats dilapidated, health centers, others rot away. NULGE expresses frustration as states impose administrators on local governments. I felt like dying after losing wife, four kids in gas explosion. An oil man speaking there, a really sad one. And uh, how feeding apprenticeship technical skills was in poverty, job loss to foreigners. A poor upbringing made me hungry for love. Esther Nwachuku speaking. Abducted pastor mistaking as kidnapper killed in Ogun Forest. Uh, Chief of Defense Staff vows crackdown on bandits as 20 slain soldiers buried. Talking about the story we mentioned yesterday, they were buried yesterday. Um, these are the stories on the front page. Who has a story in the pages of the punch? I have the poor upbringing made me hungry for love. Mm. So this actress, Esther Nwachuku, she's a popular controversial actress on the streets of social media. And she had acknowledged that the way she was brought up is a reason why she's one. The, she's very, very controversial. And two, why she's hungry for love. So she must, she does some things on social media that people kind of like question. But she is saying that, please don't blame me. It's just the way I was brought up. I didn't have a family that had so much love. I grew up in bitterness. So the way I'm acting right now 
is because of the way I was brought up. There are people who, there are plenty of people who have such stories and do not yes. act yes. the way she is acting. So if she needs help, she obviously knows she needs help. So she should mm -hmm. seek help. And not use and that, not excuse, use that yes, as, as an, an excuse, excuse for bad behavior, and that's, unfortunately. I picked up that story because, you know, it, like you said, a lot of people try to create excuses for what their parents did or didn't do or the environment they grew up in. But turning this around is just a wake-up call to, for us to say that you can choose the narrative of your life mm -hmm. as you go. Write your own story the yes, way you want the way it. The you want to, absolutely. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. National Associ Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees have accused state governors of diverting their funds, mm -hmm. which is contrary to the law. I remember, if, we, if we remember, the president had signed in order, this is called order, Executive Order 10 in 2020, that is providing that the, the local government had financial autonomy and as well as the, the, the judiciary and local governments, legislators, all of that should have financial autonomy, but it's not been implemented. So the Nigerian Union of Local Government um, employees have accused the state of crippling the third tier of government, knowing how important this is. He said, out of the 36 states we have in Nigeria, only 34 have complied with the instruction to give local governments autonomy financially, that they keep diverting the funds under the other part of the law. There's a part of the subsection of the law that allows subsection 6 and 7 and 8. It allows the states to maintain a joint, a special joint account local government system where the states put pays in the money but they have control over it. He said many states, local governments in Nigeria are in, like the local government of office is in a state of disrepair. Mm. They cannot fix their facilities. They can barely pay their staff. They can't provide any form of close to the, um, they're supposed to provide close service to the locals and they don't have the funds to do it because they are not getting the money that should come to them. They mentioned how many of the hospitals and primary schools which fall under local government are in state of disrepair. Only two states are compliant in Nigeria fully with the law as regards local government and the states are Jigawa states mm -hmm, and I wanted to know. states. Yeah. The states. Just, no, Lagos because, is not Lagos compliant. Has, you know, because Lagos had to create more states so they use that as a way to say they get the, to keep the funds in that joint account and distribute it into the other, I mean, other local governments anyway. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, the, there's a sad story in the punch. It breaks my heart. Uh, it says, abducted pastor was mistaken for a kidnapper, one. yeah, and he was killed in Ogun Forest. So the family of Pastor Adini Yadisa, a chartered accountant, has demanded for justice over the mother of their son, so let me just summarize the story. Pastor Denny was uh, kidnapped on his way back from work and his family had been trying to raise the ransom, you know, to um, get his freedom. But then there were issues along the way and uh, he, they could not, you know, take the bag to the rendezvous, the place that they had expected yes, them, yes. exactly, they, were expected, they expected them to bring the bag to. But then the kidnappers also had uh, a plan to attack another church. So when they were going to the church, they brought their pastor Adini, that's the, uh, the first victim. They took him to the operation, mm -hmm. left him in the bush, and went ahead to attack the redeemed church at uh, Owode Egba. But while they were attacking, the church called mm -hmm. on the policemen and the so safe corps, and then there was uh, an exchange of um, bullets. gunfire, bullets, mm -hmm. and some of the kidnappers escaped. And while they were combing the bush, they saw Pastor Deni right there in the forest. And they thought he was, and they the thought one. He was one of them because, uh, because oh, of course, it was frail. And maybe the kidnappers had you know, tried to uh, make him, make him like no, maybe not look like them. They had dismembered him. Like he, he was also, I think he also had the bullet uh, wound mm -hmm. on his leg. So they thought that he was one of the kidnappers that was trying to escape. So they killed him right there. There was a video that um, showed some of the youth members attacking him with knives and planks. Oh, Even his wow. dead body was dragged through the oh forest because they did they not, know you know, they did not like regard him at all. Oh. So the family, uh, they are calling, they are calling for justice, and they said that um, they have written a petition to the commissioner of police, and then they said everybody in that video will be charged with murder, with, with murder. And um, 
Yeah, they'll continue I, to uh, investigate to see. I don't know. What came to mind is that lady that was also attacked in um, in the in, in the, the one in the north, and we saw the video of persons who attacked her, who killed her up till today. We haven't gotten justice, yes. and so I don't know how this would be different from that case. Well, this one has there's a video evidence. So they there was a video evidence. Mm -hmm. ah, also, know, there was a video evidence well, for that one as well. We need to have justice because a lot of people need closure. Mm -hmm. Of course. So let me quickly take this story on um, ECOWAS. So the president of ECOWAS, talking about Uma Turi, now not the chairman of ECOWAS. The chairman mm. of ECOWAS is President Bola Tinubu. Oh, so the president of ECOWAS has said that nothing must happen to uh, Bazoum, who was uh, the ousted uh, president of Niger. And uh, we recall that um, just yesterday, um, the coupists in Niger were told uh, the French envoy, they even told Nigerian envoy, that they are giving them 48 mm -hmm. hours to leave the country uh, because they had called for a meeting in the ministry and these persons did not honor their invitation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president of ECOWAS is saying, you know what, Our ish the conversation we are having is having a dialogue. War is the last resort. We are not planning to have any issues because the Kupis have opened their borders to Mali to bring in their mercenaries so that if there is any attack on them, these people can show support for them. And so as it is right now, the president, uh, the ECOWAS chair, some days ago has spoke with uh, the ulamas, Muslim ulamas, and told them they should go back and have a conversation with these persons to continue dialogue. Mm -hmm. As it is, war is not the option. What they want is a dialogue. But um, the coupists in Niger are trying to put up a hard stance towards uh, the conversation. Yeah, let's support. Anyway, let's see what happens in the coming days. To the Saturday sun now. The major story, renewed supremacy battles rages on in APC as Tinubu's men move to wrest power from governors. President's allies, Governor Bedo at loggerheads in Kugi, Oshomale floors Ayade in South South, we are resolving issues, party spokesman is saying. But how could refinery to begin operations in December, federal government? Interesting. 4.1% unemployment rate report laughable, says Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, others. House of Babalawo. <laughs> Lagos building where Ifa priests are born, raised, and tutored. Interesting. Ohaneze offers to sign surety for Kanu. Uh, not only gladden Indigo's hats uh, than IPOB leaders' freedom. Group youth salute reps call for his release. How cold war in Lagos APC caused rejection of some Wolu's cabinet nominees? Stakeholders are saying this. Governor never ignored party. Matter is being handled, says spokesman. Echo was not at war with Niger. Nigerians to raise speaking. Tough tasks before Tinubu's ministers. Expect experts in economy, ICT, oil and gas, law, solid, mineral, state challenges offer solutions. Why we are not impressed by Badaru Matawale's choices as defense ministers, Iowa Consultative Forum and uh, another forum speaking there. Who has what story? I was so curious about the legal state one, but it was just too political for me to handle. The mm -hmm. good news seemed like the fact that the Potakot refinery is going to be up mm -hmm. by December 2023, mm -hmm. according to the Minister for State mm -hmm. Oil. States, I mean, Minister for State Petroleum Resources Oil, Senator Heineken Lokobiri, who was followed for the inspection with um, the other um, Minister for State for Gas, Honorable um, Ekbo, Ekbo, and the Permanent Secretary for Petroleum Resources, and Ambassador Gabriel T. Aduda, and the Group CEO for NNPC PCL. All these people were there. You know, we've been waiting for this refinery to be up. And we're happy that whatever turnaround maintenance is, being going, is going on, we're going to hold the Minister of State to his word. Now you are talking. We're going to hold him to his word. They promised us plenty of things. This is December 2023. You and I, we're going to be alive <laughs> in December 2023. <laughs> and we're going to hold you to your word that the Dangote, I mean the... You see, um, you mentioned yeah. something. You just mentioned yeah, something that I also... Yes, he mentioned, had, yes, he he mentioned, mentioned it as well. Yeah. Dangote Refinery 2 mm -hmm. is expected to start working, but... Um, start working when? 
mm. the, mm -hmm. the because that had been the controversy there's been controversy surrounding that as that one from a particular day to June to July to now we are hearing they 2025. Did not, they did not give us date for the Dangote one, but they said Dangote one will October. start working. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to have come upstream for some time now, but we kept stalling and stalling. And I hope that this is not what it's going to be with the Potakot refinery. But like he has mentioned, we'll hold them to account. I believe Nigerians are listening. We'll put them on their toes. If it does not come up in December, then we'll begin to talk. Uh, so, Toby. Yes, the 4.1% unemployment rate reports laughable, says MAN and others. So the National Bureau of Statistics has said that there is a decline in the unemployment rate from 33% 33, 33 in 2018 to 4.1% in 2023. And the organized private sector of Nigeria is saying that this is so laughable that we see everything that is happening currently in Nigeria and we're saying that the unemployment rate is just 4.1 percent. Um, a rep from the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria said it doesn't make sense at all. It's unbelievable to say the least. You don't need to be a statistician to know that the figures don't belong to Nigeria. We see throngs of unemployed people roaming the streets. We see people hanging around factory gates looking for any available jobs. We see graduates searching for even menial jobs just to get by. How can you say the unemployment rate is 4.1 percent. And so this has been conversation, this has been a conversation mm. that has been ongoing saying that the 4.1 percent that the National Bureau of Statistics had put in place is absolutely unbelievable and laughable. <laughs> uh, because that's what some persons have been talking about. How did we arrive there? How did we see the decline and all of those? is just a clinical, clinical percent. When you look at what, how much, how much we're buying right now, that, buying right now. It, that's over 100 percent. You see, inflation is. Hmm. So we, they have their numbers. It, they really have they have the way they get their numbers, yeah, but right, it's right. fine. I think they should use um, measures that people can relate to mm. you know, to actually quantify. Okay, we'll have to leave it here yeah. now. Yeah. When we return, we'll look at uh, we'll discuss uh, our hot topic. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I will drink. No, you are joking. I'm not joking. Click your money. No. <laughs> she you didn't want me. me. You didn't want me now. I think I will drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the. The, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is, that's very easy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know so it, it's, out there. it's supposed to be. Yeah, I just said, let I give you this one as a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink. <laughs> 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 I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. You did not, you, you did not say final answer. Final answer. You, did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you. Yeah, how, many, how many cameras do they have? Nikon. I went to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. ask questions if I want to ask questions. And if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. I mean, just you. I may even tell you I saw this. What if, what if it's in person? Mm -hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you fool can just be on third me language. <laughs> <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, babe, I cannot do it again. <laughs> and you lose range. <laughs> So, what would oh change? God. What would change the scenario? For, like, 
it doesn't matter where. Do you want to have like a fancy dinner hey, like the film you were no, mentioning? No, 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 like funny or be right. Or do you want to be on the street? No, carry me no, 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 All right, it's time for our hot topic. Um, so let's give you the story. A 33-year-old Nigerian lady sent us the story of how she did not grow up with a silver spoon. But she had the luck of meeting men with promising future. She ditched the last man because he, he left for Kaduna in pursuit of his career goals. Dated a few times and even got pregnant twice. But this man ditched her also. Then she met this man and that was where her woes began. According to her, he looked physically okay, but he started the relationship on lies. Down to where he lived, according to her, it looked like a true definition of poverty. But she was already emotionally attached to him and that is where her woes continued because we had mentioned began. <laughs> she told her pastor about her fears, but he persuaded her not to leave himself, not to leave him, saying that he has a bright future. She continued, and for more than eight years, she paid every single penny from renting a house to paying school fees to getting a shop for this man who had even embarrassed her by not coming to the wedding introduction with his people after they had picked a date, and she had already single-handedly paid for the event. She has attempted to leave several times, but the guy keeps begging and families get involved. Now, at this juncture, she is totally done and has asked for transfer from work to another state. Her pastor, again, is asking her to stay. She is confused. And it's our advice. What are your thoughts? Join the conversation and call us on 081-0764-1679 or 090-241-63440. Or tweet to us at TVC Connect using the hashtag Your View on TVC. She's in dire straits, according to her. What should she do? Should she go along with the man to her new location? Should she leave him? Because her pastor is saying he, is, he has a bright future. He is your cross. You have to stick with this man. What do you do? There's also the aspect of, okay, what happens to the three children she has for him? And that, um, is it that the family will reject these children? These are other aspects to the story that we bring to you. So I'm just trying to flesh it here and there. Uh, the, the aspect of these three children... If she takes them away from the man, will, have, will his family accept them or not? She feels that her children need a father figure, so to speak. But the man keeps beating her. He keeps um, taking her drugs. He's refused to work, so to speak. And the pastor keeps insisting, this man is the man for you. you. Oh, yeah. She's waiting for your advice. Okay, Damala is shaking her head. Let's begin with you. It's such a pathetic story. First of all, if you are watching narrator, I'm so sorry for your ordeal. I'm so sorry that you had to go through all these uh, despicable things all in the name of marriage. But first of all, I would want you to flee from that pastor. So it's either the pastor is the weapon fashioned against you <laughs> or... He just lacks the wisdom that you seek in him. Or maybe your husband has something on him that is making the pastor pitch him to you every time. Because there's just something that is clearly dysfunctional there. And then number two, your transfer is an opportunity for you to flee, to start over again. Please do not um, think about uh, societal stigma what would people say? I'm a mother of three. How would I start all over again? Please choose your happiness first and take this transfer as uh, your jackpot from suffering <laughs> because you really need, you deserve a second chance because you're obviously dealing with a narcissist here. He doesn't feel good about himself, so he's taking it out on you. He's making you feel lesser than who, who you are because he's not man enough to do all the roles that you have taken 
as a provider. So please protect your mental health, take your transfer, and start a new life. And while at it, don't uh, now wallow in pity. Take good care of yourself. Let your skin be skinny. Let your body be body. <laughs> you know, just live a happy life, and I wish you all the best. Well, it must be stated that they are not married. He has not paid her dowry because you mentioned marriage. He has not paid her dowry. When they went for introduction, he didn't, she, he didn't show up initially. And she called his brother and they were laughing, must you force him to marry you, something like that in the first place. But later on, there was an introduction that she spent her own money. She sponsored at the end of the day. And then the aspect of pastor speaking, is there anything wrong with a pastor giving his shepherd, uh, his sheep rather, his <laughs> shepherd, his sheep, advice we have seen pastors who, who give people advice is there anything wrong with that especially when it comes to choosing life partners some persons just perhaps need such guidance don't you think toby i think so and i do not underplay the roles of pastors in our lives today although there are extreme cases like this one where you clearly know even within yourself that this thing is harmful and detrimental to me but because a pastor has said a pastor has, has seen a vision that this person is the person for me. You will stay the, irrespective of what it is that you face. And for the lady, the first thing that came to my mind when I was reading this was she's somebody looking for somebody to love her. She had had her experiences of heartbreaks, of people just ditching her. So the one that now decided to even make it just manage you, in quotes, right is doing all of this and for some others it's easy to say stand up and leave but looking at the track record of how a lot of people have broken her heart it's difficult for her it may be difficult for her to not just take the decision to stand up and another thing i also wanted to say is that hmm, this love matter we sometimes underestimate it but mm. we hear severe cases of people saying that love made me do X, Y, Z. And you be like, ah, now the same love that they love now, how come is this deep, right? <laughs> but we do not understand the experiences that a lot of people have, have gone through, right? A pastor says stay. And I mean, okay, that's okay. A pastor can say stay. But you, like Oyeda Mola once said, suffer never tire you. I mean, <laughs> and you know, there are times when it seems like pastors are giving the advice that they, that they feel is right, you know, for example, Christianity would say that it is okay, you must, I mean, they push the narrative of for better, for worse, right? Whereas if you check through the scriptures yourself, it's not expressly stated there, right? And you can infer things based on the circumstances that you're going through in life at that particular time. Lastly, I'll say, now you know what in your eye they see. There are people that have a... A, a larger threshold to withstand pain, to withstand hurt, to withstand abuse. And some people immediately like this, eh, once they cite it, they've moved. So if you know that you can still take it on, stay. But like Oyeda Mola said, if suffer never tire you, you must still stay. Her major I issue, one of her yes. major issue is her children. I feel oftentimes, I can't leave my children. And that's the narrative we often hear people, yes. from people who face abuse, mm. who find themselves in abusive marriages or relationships. I can't leave my, my children. children. I have had this number of children. What will happen? And you know how our society is when it comes to you being a single mother. It's not, the society doesn't seem fair to them. So, Talk I can't leave my children. I can't leave my children. Or your children will leave when you are gone. Mm. Mm. Oh, I cannot leave my children, but they would live a very good life. They might do one minute silence on their wedding day for you, but their life would continue. So I think it's important that we note that part. For those that that's their sentiment, I can't leave my children. Know that your children will live without you when you pass on. If stress kills you, if domestic Abuse. violence kills you, or emotional violence kills mm -hmm. you, or life just takes you away, their life would go on. We put that one on one side. So, you don't need to look for love. The most important love you need is self-love. Love yourself. And for those struggling with the idea of how to love themselves, understand and draw strength from the love of God. Not the love your pastor tells you about. Not the love 
that people you've seen on social media that people are saying God loves you. The love that you have found from studying the word by yourself, knowing God by yourself. You, when you know God, if you are a Muslim, you, you are just saying it you. now. When you know knowledge mm. is key. So as I said, for you, for those struggling yeah. with how to love themselves, then go on that. I mean, for those struggling, struggling with love, mm. because for many people, they are from this narrative of this lady. She's looking for love. She wants to be loved. She wants mm -hmm. someone that would love her and pamper her and take care of her. It's not bad. And it's not a bad thing. Yes. But if you are in the search for it, ending up in a revolving circle like of bad things, you should, then you should step back, back. and check yourself that I need right. to love myself. Mm. I am deserving. Mm -hmm. I am deserving of my love. And if, the, if the time and money I've invested in this man, if I actually invest it in myself, I probably will be better off than where I am right now. Mm -hmm. She tells herself mm -hmm. the truth. So, love yourself. Invest that love in yourself. The love you are looking, the way you are checking on him. How is he doing? Is he eating? Should he eat? Is he sleeping? You two, check on yourself. Have I eaten? Am I sleeping? Am I doing well? Because by the time you love yourself to the point of confidence, you will attract the right man to yourself. Mm -hmm. So, where she is, three children. We've seen people that marry after four children. That a widow in Calabar, I can never forget her story. After four children, she remarried a single man mm -hmm. who's never been married before, loving her four children like his own. She then later gave him two extra children. Mm -hmm. Some people are blessed like that, and I believe this woman is deserving of that blessing if she believes in herself the same way. Finally, mm -hmm. pastors that hear from God. How many times did I call you? As in, <laughs> I don't want to even call you too many times on national television. But it is important that you keep, when you give advice as a spiritual guide, you must also ask your people to consult God and reconfirm the word for themselves. So if you have advice, the pastor has advice, I hold the pastor accountable, and I also want to let her know you're 33. You're not a baby anymore. Mm -hmm. You're a full-grown adult. If a human being is telling you to enter into a pitch, into a ditch, and you walk into it, you can't blame that human being because you have your own two eyes. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's a ditch and it might hurt you. So this lady should... Take the pastor's word, but also understand that she is a prophet to herself, first over herself, and step out into the, uh, the arms of God that she believes in. Instead of listening to the pastors, sometimes pastors will tell you, wait, like in the case of a criminal, when you watch that movie, mm. imagine if a pastor yeah, told yeah. her to wait, mm -hmm. and she should wait, and she will feel like, ah, I should move on. And sometimes you now feel like when you move on, the man now blew. Your destinies did not align. Yes. But one of the guys she dated that she she did not she left because he moved to Kaduna. Yeah. Eventually it blew blew. Mm -hmm. so yes, now he, he went to Canada and your she was did not align. So don't think a man is the solution to your problem. Yes, you, you must understand me. yourself. Just because I know the one is watching it, I've given it to her boss. I'm just she, being she nice. She said that you should not criticize her too much. <laughs> she knows that she has messed up. Yes, Please. she agreed. Yes. Now she has yeah. agreed that she messed up, which is a good yes. place to begin from. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Toby, you wanted to say something. Yes, I wanted to just buttress what she said, but she had already expressed it in a different way. And that's Absolutely. Now, this is what I want to say. Uh, beginning with uh, the lady, right? You, you mentioned something about you didn't grow up with a silver spoon. A majority of us did not grow up with a silver spoon, right? But somehow, we were guided to get to where we are now. So it is not about your background. Mm. It is about the fact that you can decide to write your story differently. Yes, the place you are might influence you, but you can decide that this place that I found myself, how is it helping me? How is it building me to becoming better such that my children will benefit from me in the future and I can also reap from the labor that I have expended upon my children. Yes, society, the patriarchy in our society, is not friendly towards some of these things. When you talk about single mothers and the fact that um, you, ha you have this number of children, the man also is not helping you. Her mind has been bastardized. Mm -hmm. The man keeps calling her names, mm -hmm. unprintable names that I do not want to mention here. He goes through her emotional phone. Emotional abuse. So that emotional abuse, I think we need to Let's touch on that. The emotional abuse that she has gone through, which has not helped her. In fact, she left at some point. But she did not get the help she needed because she said um, these shelters, they were asking her to pay money. She paid and they were telling her to come back. 
they would sort her, they would do this, they would do that. Talking about homes where you keep some people. Mm -hmm. Talking about if you are facing domestic abuse, we have that shelter mm -hmm. in Lagos. Mm -hmm. We have a few of them. We have a few of them yeah. across human, states. Human rights, yes, uh, human rights. Yeah. Who look into yeah. these matters. I think we also need to talk about that. That they kept asking her to come back. She paid, I think, about 20,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. And they kept asking her to go, come back. And because she did not get what she wanted, she had to go back to this man. And then he kept abusing her, calling her unprintable names, calling her children unprintable names as well. And, and then... In the paternity. Yes, he was doubting the paternity of the children. It's just a sad one. So her mind has been bastardized as it is. She needs to even begin from how to pick up... <laughs> how to pick up from the place of the mind. I, talk, I love talking about the mind. The mind is powerful. On my website, the first thing you see is the human mind is limitless because <laughs> that is the truth. Our human mind is limitless and you must protect this thing called your mind because your mind, it, it, it shapes how you feel. And anybody that is polluting your mind is polluting your life, is polluting your identity. Absolutely. And I feel that the pollution has been in her life from a very long time. It's not from just when she was man. born. It was from when she was born, because that's why she keeps attracting people that fall into this category. Yeah. It's why she's attracting a pastor who is telling her to stay in an abusive relationship. It is why the man would feel she's deserving of you throwing those words. Some people will hear, they would, they would be in that relationship, a man will throw one negative word at them. They would immediately mm -hmm. cut the man mm -hmm. like, hello? Mm -hmm. You can, you can vex any vex in this world. Never, never ever. ever, ever use emotional drama mm. or emotional bad language on me. This is where we are fighting. Our fighting ends here. All right. We have Gabriel on the line calling from Abuja. Gabriel, good morning. Go ahead with your contribution. Yeah. Um, good morning, Ma. Good morning. Today, my, my only is that that lady is supposed to have lived the marriage because she would have used the reference of things that have happened to people. Then let's look at the case of Osinachi that mm. has her mm. in, the of, in, in the case of uh, pastors uh, thinking about the position in church or one thing or the other. So the pastor is not supposed to have told her hosting. And if she realizes that she cannot be able to be on the marriage, or the marriage is not good for her, she can better walk away and find and yeah. build a good life. The husband is the head of the family, not her being the head. So if she realizes mm. that she's the head, Family that she's living, that means she's not capable to be in that. She's, she's not worthy to be in that marriage. She has to be in a place that someone will take care of her, not by taking care of a man. Mm. That you sure that her children are fine. So if she realizes that she fall into a man that was not on her custody, the Bible still recommends when you find something that is not good in the marriage, you can quickly leave that man and then move ahead. If it's not, if it, they say it is, it, it, the, the Bible says it that. It is still right for the only thing that a man can leave a marriage is an abusive or unfaithful character. That means the man is not playing her his own role as the head of the house and maybe abusing the woman rather than falsely. And before you know it, now a case will come out for for domestic violence. So before this domestic violence, I advise the lady to peacefully walk away in that marriage, move ahead with her life, and then be giving attention to her children. Then for us to be able to have a self time living. It will be very, very wrong for her to say because of my children or because of what people will say. Nobody will say, nobody is following you to six feet. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know she has gone, he has gone. No. Other people that such things has happened to, they have gone on their mm -hmm. own. So mm -hmm. it's better not for her to. Sorry, Gabriel, that part was very important for you to hammer on, unfortunately, network. Just to keep there, but he has said a lot. Jabala, you wanted to say something? Yes. I would, talking about hammering, you know, I like to hammer on things. Mm, <laughs> carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to say marrying a financial, a man that is not financially stable is a huge red flag. How do you mean? It is a huge red flag. If, he's, if you have, if you, if you can see his potential and you have time to wait, please wait. Let that potential begin to bring some light at the end of the tunnel before you finally settle. I know there are exceptions to the rules, uh, to this rule, but then there are situations, a lot of situations where we've heard women being the breadwinner and then the men feel uncomfortable. Is there anything wrong with that? So the, the way the society is designed, men are designed to be the breadwinner. You cannot, as a woman, 
you cannot be feeding your husband, just like the last caller said. And if the man does not get the opportunity to actually be the man in the relationship, he would rather resort to emotional abuse, like what we've seen this man do to her, because this man is trying to beat her down, because he doesn't have anything to lay claims to that manhood. He doesn't have anything to bring to the table. So he would rather reduce her, you know, emotionally break her, such that he would feel better about himself, that, okay, at least she, I'm, the man I'm, I'm the man here. So that thing is a huge red flag. And I think women should pay attention to it. If you have time, if you're in your 20s, yeah, you say, that, okay, this man is hardworking, he has the potential, please wait, study that potential, let that potential yield results before you eventually settle. Because money is important in every relationship, in a marriage. Okay. Love is not blind, though. love can see. So please, money will open and, your eye. And exactly, and love will not oh, pay the bills. Poverty will open the eye. Love when will love not is pay blind. the bills. Exactly, you poverty have rent, you have uh, electricity, fees. you have school fees. Love is not enough. All please, right. Let, we have a caller, Samuel from Okeodo. Samuel, good morning. Thank you for uh, joining good us. Good Go morning. ahead. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yes, ma. Uh, so for my only start is that that for that first time the man is not her husband. Could you speak because up, please? Yes, I said the man is not her husband. If he is he is her husband, this problem will not come up. Mm. And the, the mistake I've already made, for me, I have a uh, sister-in-law that such a thing happened to. But now, I advise the lady, you are the one that the boys in your court, play it very well. I will not tell you to leave. Mm. I use parable for her. I will not tell her to leave <laughs> or to stay. Mm. If you love your life, know what to do <laughs> and if the woman love her uh, the children if you are if she's capable to take care of the children let her take the children away for the man mm. and take care of them if he, if she's capable to do that to make sure the children grown up in godly way mm. Thank you, Samuel, for your contribution. She's yes. She's paying rent and doing all of these things. Which is very, <laughs> she has it. Uh, Toby, you wanted to yes, say something. Speaking of children, the mm. caller highlighted a point about children, and that's um, something I wanted to speak about. Most times, we hear women especially say, I can't live because of my children. But when you see that you're in that, and making your children experience such abuse, such talking down on you, it does something to their psyche, yeah. one, to make them think that women are not anything of worth in the actual sense. They're supposed to be trampled upon. They're supposed to be spoken actually to. And you don't want to raise that kind of um, children. children that would not value the worth of the woman. Or, in another case, now repeating the same thing that their father was doing to you because they don't have better examples around, around them. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's important sometimes when you think about your children, think about the long-term effect of the abuse them. on them. Now, Damala, I'm coming back to you. You mentioned you something. <laughs> yes. Yes. Talking about money, it's, you know, sometimes the man has downtimes and the woman has to step in because it's more in a marriage, it's more of we are together be it in the good times or in the bad times. And so if he's having a downtime financially, the woman can step in. Oh. If she's capable, even when she's not capable, they scramble whatever it is they have because at the end of the day, it is us against the situation at hand at the end of the day. Now, when a man is seeking to trample on you because you have money, then he is immature. Mm. He does not understand what it is when your woman is financially buoyant, you should be proud exactly. that your wife has, is doing so well. You should be proud. Beat your chest. That is my wife. She is doing well in whatever business or endeavor she is in that is giving her so much. And so you should stand tall and say she is my wife. She feeds you, so what? She clothes you, uh -huh. is there anything bad there? <laughs> Are you the man or not? Has your gender changed? I don't, what defines a man even in the first place? What makes you a man? Yes, the scripture talks about the man taking care of the home and all of it. But there are times where you as a man, there are down times and the woman can step in. And then you begin to ensure that you are not relaxed. Absolutely. Oh, because she's doing this. 
You begin to look at ways of improving on yourself. Yeah, you're she talking. Balanced it already. Yeah, you're you know, talking. she balanced it. You know, because it's important. <laughs> so there, there, there are different. There are diff different mm -hmm. categories. She balanced she it because she mm -hmm. said that when you are when you are in your twenties, you can both of. If you're marrying somebody that is young, there's room for. But if you marry somebody that is in their forties. You know what they say? They fool at forty. Is it like they say they say a fool forever. Not necessarily a fact, but it's a saying. So she balanced it to say that as you have gotten older, you must be more versed about reality. When I am coaching um, or advising mentees that are single and they want to get married, I ask, "What is he doing? What skills does he have?" Because I am able to see what love has blinded her to see before poverty will open her eyes in marriage. Because love can be blind before you marry. Few years into the marriage, poverty will open your does eyes. Does money guarantee peace in the marriage? Does it guarantee that? Does it guarantee? What does it guarantee? guarantee and, uh, we will come back to this matter. Emmanuel is calling from Oweri. Emmanuel, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. I appreciate what people are doing there. It's really wonderful because uh, at a time like this, a lot of families are born in the same. So a lot of uh, families have this issue. But I also want to say this issue does not relate only to women. Mm -hmm. There could be abuse on men, there could be abuse on women. It's not, it's not good either way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So, but I want to say, the, the lady on Netflix, I don't know her name actually. Uh, Damola. Damola. Yeah. Damola. I, I appreciate what she was saying because everything is bothered on the mind of a human being. Do you understand? I don't want to believe that money, money makes marriage. What you need in marriage is potentials. Do you understand? If, if, if a man has the potential, he may not have money at the, at the point in time. Some people left their husband and a month after, two months after, the man with big money. Mm -hmm. It happens in life. Mm -hmm. so what I'm saying here, you have a conscience. You know what you want out of life. If there's, if there's battery in your marriage, if there's violence, domestic violence, you don't wait for any pastor or any man to mm -hmm. tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel? Oh, ah, so all right. Well, we need to go on a commercial break. When we return, we'll continue our conversation. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, multiple award-winning actor, producer, ambassador of Edo people, we have Etinosa Idemudia in the building. <laughs> Not be first to go police station they win the case. Let's so see. you don't, you are showing no, yourself. I go, I go see my you are question. feeling like a, a contact the prancing peacock. I'm about to cut your wings. Hello? Now, in the amalgamation of 1914, who was the woman who that. said, who drew the line of the amalgamation? The, who, who, cut, who cut the report? Who is the person that used to say? That woman. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, you have done me dirty. I've marked your face. I've marked your face if anything happened to me today. I don't, I don't if I don't reach my house. Anyway, I'm going to be shuffled, so... Mm. You remember now, Avi? Eh? <laughs> yeah, but you never too thin, man. Um, now you remember. Hey! If a person who indulges habitually in watching a sexual material is called a voyeur... That's what I'm called. <laughs> You clearly say you don't go even get the yeah. next one. Hey, hey, a voyeur. Voyeur. Then go on. Cool. What is a person who makes one? A voyeur. <laughs> a voyage. <laughs> a bon voyage. All right, thank you for staying with us. We're still looking at our hot topic. In the next few minutes, we'll be wrapping it up. And I asked a question earlier that does money guarantee love, understanding, peace, unity in that relationship or marriage? Because we're saying love is imp uh, uh, money is important, this and all of that. Mo right. love, love, nothing guarantees a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Money does not guarantee happy marriage. Love 
does not guarantee happy marriage. Or at least money will guarantee something. You are not suffering physical discomfort. So that's, there's a guarantee with Who money. Who says? You can when be you, depressed. You have the money there. Physical. Haven't I, you I, seen I, I people... I qualified it to, uh, Veronica. I said, money guarantees that you will not suffer physical discomfort. Mm. Because you might still cry of the depression, mm. but you will cry it in a private jet in business yeah, class, yeah. you will clean your eye with dollar. <laughs> it is a, it's a different kind of cry. I married purely for love. I married prospecting to so prospect. We thank God that our prospect is prospecting. Absolutely. So I am I'm all for marrying prospects. But after being through marriage and seeing my husband spoil me with gifts and money, I realized that money makes love sweeter. And mm -hmm. I've said it several times on the show before. Truly, money makes love sweeter, and we shouldn't discount it in terms. No, we are not saying we are discounting. I'm saying so money. Open what and what she and she qualified it. She actually gave a very balanced statement. I would, I would dislike for anybody online to listen to a first part of her, of what she said and not listen to the last part and summarize what she said because she said yes. Don't be so blind to the need for money, and there are ages. There, there are times that you can make gambles about this thing. You can be young and gamble with trying different work experience. When you get to 50, you shouldn't be trying different, different things at that point because you should have come to know yourself enough to know what you like and what you don't like. So let's right. be open to that conversation. But I'd like to hear yes. wedding anniversary, 60th <laughs> anniversary perspective <laughs> exactly. on this yeah, no. money mm -hmm. thing. You, I beg. Uh, you mentioned that nothing guarantees marriage. Mm. I think that there's something that guarantees marriage. Good. And it is two people continuously deciding to choose each other. Absolutely. Commitments. Right. Commitments. Mm -hmm. And because there is instances, things would happen. Money issues, it will come. Love issues, come. Another Challenges person, here and there. Your husband, <laughs> come. Right? But the decision to cons cons constantly say that, I want this person. I choose this person. That's it. It's very, very important in this marriage conversation that we speak about. Mm, very important. And um, you want to say something yeah, quickly? I, I just wanted to continue her thoughts. And in choosing to be, be with that person, ensure that that person is also choosing to be with you. Mm. They are not abusing you. you, you are not, yes, ensure that it is not one-sided, that both of you are choosing each other, that both mm. of you are making conscious efforts you know, to achieve the marriage goals that both of you have set mm. but in this woman's case for example i would not advise her to continue choosing this man that has rubbish absolutely not. down her self-esteem uh, so i wish I I th I th yeah i think we are time. wishing yeah we're wishing them all the best at the <laughs> this table wishing her ha exactly ha well, the I, best I, I, and yeah uh, conclusion please just yes. help us sum it up everything that we have said <laughs> of course that, that's where i am headed uh, because you have given a balanced um, perspective yeah. to, to this aspect. Uh, but I would begin with the aspect of the pastor. I tell people, know God for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because it is important that whatever decision you are taking, you are responsible. And that you know that, okay, this decision I am taking, it is not based on this person said this or that. Because you are the one that will feel the pinch. Absolutely. Not the pastor or whoever that gave you the advice. So know God for yourself so that whatever decision you are taking, it is guided by that knowledge that you have of him. And then the matter of marriage and all of that, you should know what you want in marriage it is critical then you can have a conversation with whoever you want to get married to because if you have no idea of what it is you want a departure from maybe you want a departure from what you saw with what your parents had you must have that conversation there are people who have come out of abusive marriages that had uh, abusive homes that had good marriages. marriages it's very important they decided that they do not want to have that kind of relationship in their marriage and so they built on it it's work oh. if you want to get the best out of your relationship your marriage you have to put in the work deliberately mm -hmm. to ensure that it works know your partner know yourself and then you can build on your prospects help each other grow it's also important yeah. there are people who see their partners as their competitors that's not a good one Absolutely. work on yourselves to see that you help the other person grow in whatever business or endeavor they are in at the end of the day it's about two of you you both are going to enjoy whatever businesses Absolutely. you are doing beautifully Thank you. said <laughs> Thank you for this. all right so we'll go on a short break when we return would we'll, uh, oh we have a phone call right <laughs> bumi okay bumi is calling for me badon go ahead with your contribution bumi 
Good morning, Bumi. Bumi. Good morning. Please, could you speak up? This is my second time. Yeah, this is my second time calling on your view. Oh, don't clap for second time. This is very, very, very important. Yeah, this is a very important topic that we are talking about. We have had and a pastor, and we had various, you know, instances. What I would say, I know that you are just being careful to tell the lady to leave or not to leave. But what I will say is this. She should go to what, whether she's a Muslim or a Christian or whatever, and let her pray, and then that's one. Then two, look at one of you said, I can't remember who said it. The children are so important in this marriage. Yeah. It's either that this relationship makes the children or not the children. And I'm sure they are very young. Let her move on in life. If these single people that take care of their children, and they don't even get married again. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people, they take care of it, and the children grow up, and they do so well. And the issue why this man is abusing her is because she, she's working, you know, she's taking care of the woman. The man is not bringing anything, he's not doing anything. And you know, people from the side, they telling the man, ah, I think I should be the one that is taking that one will get the, the man, make the man to come home, and they are abusing her. Because they don't have anything. A man that they don't have anything, they don't have anything to give you. So the best thing for you is to move on and take care of your kids. You don't, you don't even move on to look for another man. That's not even the issue, my sister. Mm -hmm. This is where it's for help. So move on and take care of these kids so that they, they will not grow up. If, if, if you have a boy there, the boy will grow up and say, that's how my father used to be my mother. So mm -hmm. that means it's the right thing to do. If, if you have a girl, the girl will say, oh, okay, I don't think I can marry. And that's why you see nowadays this gentle of uh, children. They, just, they don't want to marry. Why? It's because right. of all this. Yeah. That is the main thing. Right. They will tell you, why don't you want to No, 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 I don't want this. I can see this person. I can see this person. And I, 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 I know that as she's watching, I know that. Yeah, yeah. women, unfortunately, but you, we've you. gotten, you know, the kernel of your statement talking about it's important for her to take care of herself first she needs to embody everything that she has had clear her mind to know how she moves forward with this matter thank you so much Bumi. we'll go on a short break when we return we'll have our let's talk segment stay with us ladies and gentlemen make welcome pioneer positive force member Dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1973. He said 73. He said 75. I couldn't. Fellas wasn't even born to 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You go drink. Oh. Take, 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 make a I help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Lights in in no. Nepal, Nepal Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepal Road, Nepal Road. In a Ah <laughs> uh -uh. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A bleak. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah, eh, omi omo fella, omi omo anikula kpokuti. Oro pe kini kekele. It's my other song. It's not my other song. Eh, eh.
doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Ike Chuku, Sunday, Okonkwo, aka Cross. Are your intro without you? Wow. So there's a name that thing that's. I'm just drinking because you say I should drink. There's no particular answer. You think it's only that can be wicked? What's the answer? Sort of huge. Eh? Yeah. They claim you did, but you said it just happened. That and it's called what again? Sort of huge. Sort of huge. S U B T E R F U G. So you look me finish from head to toe. You look at a person who go know what to be called hot sauce, hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. The nude wasn't like a game plan. Or... I promise you, be it was actually a mission. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversation. All right, thank you for staying with us. The catastrophic death of late Dr. Boalwere Diasu at the General Hospital Odon, Lagos Island, was one that raised a very big question to our perennial ineptitude maintenance culture. This elevator accident could have been avoided if the necessary maintenance had been done or done as it went due. Today on the show, we will be discussing how we can imbibe maintenance culture into the fabrics of our society, how good culture of maintenance helps in preventing or averting disaster and accident, how to also maintain facilities to prevent collateral damage, and why maintenance is key in making facilities durable and efficient. But joining us to discuss this and more is Olale Kwakimumi, President, International Facility Management Association, IFMA, Lagos, Nigeria chapter. Good morning. Good Thank morning. you for joining us on the program. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome. Morning. Now, when we talk about maintenance culture, we know we lack it in this part of the world. And that is where I want us to begin. What is at the heart of this matter? Is it that we are just not, you know, endeared towards maintenance across the board, be it at home or when it comes to the office? Okay. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Yes. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, maintenance has been part of us. You know, if you reflect back to the olden days, there is a way we maintain our paths. The community will come together. They will clear the path when it is bushy, mm. just to make sure that they have a very good path. Then even looking at their buildings, they will join hands together to ensure that they change the roof and all the elements of the beauty. So there is, the culture is with us, but at a point, we, you know, we forget about it. Mm. We decided not to look at it again, that whatever we purchase, whatever we build, there should be a continuity. Maintenance is ability to sustain a facility in its own operational states mm -hmm. and ensure safety. It is not to function alone. Safety is also key Important, to it. Yeah. Something can be functioning, but the safety may not be guaranteed. Mm. Like what happened? Like what happened. Mm. So, and it's, it's quite unfortunate that that happened. Mm. You know, when you are looking at a very uh, bright future, you know, purposeful uh, lady in a very good profession, and then just have to go like that, mm. it's very sad. 
just to follow up on something you said, you said we used to have it, but at some point we lost we it. Lost I'm wondering it. what that point was. What could have happened that made us lose it? It, it is because we, we refuse. For example, now, uh, there is a saying that whenever you get to beggar here in Lagos, you oh. forget your culture, the culture that you have from your village or from your town. Mm. You know, the kind of culture of respect. You don't just throw things around. So you call you and say, oh, look, go and pick that paper. And you will do. But here in Lagos, just look at anybody can buy likes. Even you wind down your, just, your car, just something on the road, mm. so because nobody can cash it. So the enforcement, because the enforcement is not there, then you decided not to do it. Mm. And the same thing with buildings. Mm. We have a lot of laws that guide maintenance of buildings, but we don't, because it is not enforced, we don't do it. Mm. So we thought that it's not there. Uh -huh. But it's there. Okay, enforcement. Yeah. Yes, right. the enforcement is key. Good. So in line with the case of the doctor, the general manager of the Lagos State Infrastructure Management Agency was sacked. What's your take on the relevance of this agency? Does uh, the government have any business with facilities? Shouldn't that agency be privatized so that we can get more professionals to get the job done? Okay, let me give a gun of that agency. The agency came alive, I think, uh, during uh, Governor Fashola. That is when the agency came alive. And that lady was the pioneer general manager. Oh, she was the one that defended the bill at the House of Assembly. She's a passionate person when it comes to facility management. Mm. Oh. If you go to all our hospitals before the uh, establishment of that agency, it is a sorry state. Mm. But after she came on board, because the purpose is to maintain the public buildings. Mm. And if you go to that sector too, you see changes when that agency came on board. So she's not somebody that, uh, that doesn't care. There was a particular testimony of one of the uh, CMD of uh, last week in one of our programs. He said he was coming from a federal hospital, now coming to a state hospital. That when he came to that hospital last week, that he discovered that he's not running after Gardner, he's not running after this woman, he's not running after Electricia. That he now asks, What happened? They now told him that there's a facility management uh, division that handles all their facilities. So, what went wrong? Mm. So he was able to concentrate on his job rather than pursuing gardener, pursuing cleaner to mm. clean or to come and cut grasses. So it, there is a very clear cut issue there. The government purposely established it so that they can maintain all their public buildings. And that is what also happened at the federal level. Yeah. Order 11. Mm. Order 11 was specifically uh, created to ensure that the public buildings are well maintained. And this lady in question was part of that other 11. So what so now happened? That's the thing. What, what went wrong? So what went wrong? What, now went wrong. what you're mm -hmm. saying, yes. you are alluding to the fact that um, we're, we're firing the wrong person mm -hmm. who actually is very passionate about it. Of course. And the model has even been adopted on a federal level, mm -hmm. but there was, there's an obvious failure somewhere. Somewhere. And we need, it's not just a scapegoat, we need to prevent future occurrence. Yes. So what went wrong in this particular hospital's case where Could the story had been on? You see, you know, facility management is uh, about 12 competency. Mm -hmm. It's not just one of them. And for you, as a general manager, you give a uh, directive, mm -hmm. they will send you reports, you look at the reports, and if the report, there's no red signal there you will not, you concentrate on something else. Mm -hmm. okay. So, because I was discussing with one uh, uh, elevator expert, he said the elevator is supposed to have at least six ropes. Mm -hmm. So, it's not something that should just happen and kill somebody. Mm -hmm. Even if there's a crash, it Even should if cut all yes, of Yes, all the six. He said there's supposed to be ten, but at least six. Mm -hmm. So, it is something that they have to look beyond what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. It can be an act of sabotage because a lot of things do go you know, wrong. And we need to really, really look at it critically from both professional angle and then be able to prefer a kind of solution to prevent future occurrence. Right. So my next question, the next question yes. would be, how easy is it 
to carry out your duties as um, this agency, considering the bureaucracy of government processes? You see, facility management uh, is not a kind of uh, operation that needs bureaucracy. For example, if you are telling me that when there is no water, I must write for approval. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm. So, bureaucracy should be out of it. A facility manager should be given free hand to operate. You have your budget annually, and you know what you are supposed to do. You have your routine check. So, you have all this strategy in place. So, it's just for you to ensure that you deliver. Okay. So, bureaucracy should be out of it. So, should that it be what, privatized? Is, is that what you currently face? Mm -hmm. Or you still have issues with bureaucracy within the system? Bureaucracy is there. You can't take that one away. Mm -hmm. Because anything that concerns government, even private person, okay. yes, your landlord, your police, they will tell you that, okay, you that must consult me before. The, and something is happening. Right. For example, there was a damper and then the fence collapsed. Mm. And you are now telling me that I must wait for you before I protect the people yes. with that. So I have to make sure that something is in place to protect the occupants. Yeah. You mentioned something earlier with regards to this matter of um, uh, Dr. Bowery yes. that happened, talking about how it should be looked into holistically. Yes. What, what in your perspective should be the way the government should go about looking into it holistically so that we can get to the root of the matter whether it was um, an act of sabotage yeah. or that something that went wrong that we get to the root basically yeah, you know the government said they are investigating mm. if there's no fear hearing then it means all the investigation is nothing mm -hmm. because the rule is that you must give fair hearing yeah both parties must be called both parties must present their own case and then you'll be able to harmonize the thoughts together and then look for the solution ahead of it. And it's not that maybe a, a particular profession should be involved. should yeah. be all. Mm -hmm. Facility management is very diverse. Mm -hmm. It's a multidisciplinary uh, profession. So it is not something that a particular set... We have a clinical facility management and non clinical facility management. So this experience must come to bear when you want to really judge the matter. It is not something that will just be particular to a particular, I mean, specifically to a particular profession that say, okay, this. We have so many accidents on the road. Of course, yeah. And then we did not say, okay, the road safety should leave the road. <laughs> yes. I get you, but the thing is there must be consequences. Even you mentioned that there must be consequences. As it is right now, from what you're saying, I'm alluding to the fact that you are not so pleased with the immediate action of the government in firing the person that was fired, yeah. the woman. You also are alluding to the fact that there is bureaucracy in the system, so we can't blame one person. Don't make one person a scapegoat. How would you want the government to handle this in a way that would seem, because there's no just, it's not just about justice, so... You, it must be, you know, don't just do justice behind. Justice must be seen to be done. We have lost one very, very promising Nigerian. Yes. And a lot of fam the family have been put into mourning. And we yes. need to be sure that we are doing what we can to ensure they get a bit of f comfort from the justice system while we also prevent this from ever happening again. How do you believe that should be addressed? Yes. What I believe is that uh, when the government is constituting uh, their investigative panel, both parties should be there. They should be represented. Let, let us see what happened. Mm -hmm. Not behind the door. Let the, the doctor's representative be there. Let the experts in elevators be there. Let the, the, the lawyers, you know, let the facility, let them be there. So that we look at it and check what really happened. Mm -hmm. It is when we know what happened, then we now know, okay, this is what action we are going to take. And then, you know, because if the family did not see transparency in your action, it's like you are still hitting them on the wound. Mm. But when they see the transparency that these people have been open, then they will be able to say, well... Okay, so I would like to know what your um, association is doing to ensure uh, more professionals are coming into the faci facility management industry. So because we see a lot of um, collapses in Nigeria pointing to human errors and poor construction yep. um, supervision. So what is your association doing to ensure that these quacks are being fished out? Yes, we are, we are doing advocacy every, I mean, annually. 
and then we also reach out to agencies like uh, Lagos State Safety Commission. We have kind of relationship that looking at it that there should be a program in place where we can be checking all the stability of the buildings and which I told them that they should start with their own buildings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that when you start with yourself, examine yourself, then you mm. can now examine. Oh, and that's... point your finger then. Yes. And then what we also do is that we encourage our technical schools. Because that is the basis. Mm. When you are putting an elevator operator that is not trained, doesn't add up. Mm. But the technical school, they have various, you know, skills. And we encourage the last year we gave about uh, even including with the I mean injunction with the uh, La Cetra, we gave them twenty five of them two bucks to encourage them that look, being a technical school uh, graduate doesn't make you lesser in the in the uh, public. You are so important. If your work is not required in a facility or in a place, nobody can do it. You can't pull off your shirt and say you want to do bricklaying or you want to do plumbing. or you want, So somebody has to do So we have to encourage them. And then we also make sure that, look, standard. Because when the incident happened, I have to call them at our secretariat that help me to check and call all our corporate members. Who is managing that? You know, who is managing that uh, facility? But unfortunately, we couldn't find any of our members that is the one managing the facility. Mm, wow. So... That's another thing that we have started it that look, all our corporate members we must have a rallying point. That look, this is the standard. And mm -hmm. the benchmark is an international organization. We must make sure that we have that benchmark. Mm -hmm. Our people must be safe. Our people must also enjoy. Environment is supposed to be talking to you. Mm -hmm. Environment is supposed to make you come. Absolutely. Even I used to tell people that if you get to a particular environment, if that environment is so good, even when you are sick, you will discover that naturally you get, you get ill. Yeah, honestly. But if you are in an environment, and even the mere looking at the floor, it will make you, you more get, sick. Yes, immediately you will get sick. <laughs> oh, oh, we, we traveled for a program, and after a three-day program, everybody was just like, ah, see the way all of us are smiling, laughing, smiling, laughing. <laughs> like, it was, there was a change. Yeah. We're in a different country. Everything seemed to be working. We were happy. How do we bring that culture of excellence to how we do our things here? Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. She needs us to ask your question. question. Yeah. Okay. I, I like the angle you finished from speaking about the fact that there are other parastatals that your members are not um, working on mm. as facility managers. So, can you highlight some of the organizations that your your members are currently managing and I ask that question because we hear this case about Lassus and it was after that incident happened we found out you mentioned that nobody was actually on present that. Yeah. so if we can say oh this government parastatal in XYZ community is currently being monitored we can be rest assured that things like this would not happen so do you have like off your fingers like four organizations Government uh, parastatals that we are we can be sure that confident you know this was nothing can happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only God that can guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. We, we can only try our yeah. best because at times, even when you prepare yourself and say, Okay, I'm prepared for this, and then you discover that something will happen. So, which ones are so, you trying? You know, I, I'm I, I know that uh, currently, uh, most of the hospital hospitals in Lagos State. It's being managed by facility managers. Right. I know that. I do. I know of Bagada that sometimes <laughs> you can't use it, but now ah. you can use it. Mm. Sure, you understand. So, and some of other buildings, you know, that belongs to the government, mm. are being uh, used. Like you. Sorry, you asked me a question before. No, about, right, about um, she, okay. it was talked about that as Ex uh, excellence. excellence. Yes, I would say that it is all of us. Yourself, when you conquer yourself, then you'll be able to translate it to other people. Mm. If I'm traveling, I did not throw something outside. Mm. If somebody does that, I would say, ah, ah, madam, that thing is not good. Mm. But if you are the leader, you are doing the same thing, you can't you not be able finger. to point, point your fingers. Finger. So we have to work on ourselves as individuals and ensure that, look, when you are buying something, it is not forever. There must be plan 
for maintenance. There must be plan for changes. And that is why we are advocating that, look, let facility managers be part of the design of your projects. From the beginning. Either, right. So that they will be able to give some angles mm. to it. Because when they are managing it, they will know what happened when they were designed and what they should do. Mm. That would make them to be a better manager. Instead of giving me something that I have to be cracking, my, what may likely happen, I don't know where the conduit pass. I don't, even if you give me the drawing, at times you have the drawing, but what you have on site is different from what you have in the drawing. Mm, right. So cutting corners. It, yeah. it happens. No, I, not even cutting corners. They may still use the same standard, but maybe the, the, the location, mm. they may change it. Right. Okay. So, but if a facility manager is on ground, he knows that, oh, this is the where pass the track. And then we know what to do about it. Now, you mentioned earlier that um, there are standards yes. for maintaining uh, facilities. Now, for instance, this facility, what should be the standard for maintenance? Yes, you know, for, for studios like this, you know, that you use light more often. Mm -hmm. Is the lighting you are using, is it friendly? What is the effect on the people that are under it? All these have to be put into consideration. Then what is the, uh, the exit like? Because when I was entering here, I was looking <laughs> for... <laughs> is there any... Another uh, exit route? outside, yes. Sure you understand? Yeah. Because whenever you enter any particular hall or building, the you must... That, that's why signage is very important. Mm. They must give sign this way, this way, this way, so that you know what to do when the eventuality happens. Mm. So the standard should be that, look... All the, you know, the wiring, the cables and everything, they are well taped, they are well uh, managed in a manner that it doesn't cause any accident to anybody. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we must have that one behind ourselves and then be able to move on. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. So you I only mentioned Bagada General Hospital. No, no, I don't. You know, I said the, the hospital. I only mentioned Bagada because I, I, I think I, 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 I've used the place twice. Okay. And uh, I know what happened when it's been managed by the hospital themselves and what is mm -hmm. happening when they are not doing it. All right, let me quickly ask this question. As individuals, yes. how do we imbibe the culture of maintenance, safety, and all of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. As individual, you have to, number one, yourself. Are you safe? What you are into? What is the safety around it? Then number two, what is the, uh, the kind of risk you are putting your neighbor into? Mm. By the time you understand these two, you'll be able to say, okay, if, I want to, if I'm having this structure, maybe annually I'm setting aside 10% of my income, I mean the income of that, if it is a commercial one, the income of that particular property maintain. to maintain. Is for, it is already done. It's a budget that 10% of it is going for this. So if there's going to be a kind of uh, uh, overblown budget, that one is a separate issue. Mm -hmm. But you must ensure that, look, I have 10% to, to maintain this. That is the way we can do it. It's a standard. That so is the standard. No, idea. it can be more. It depends on the, 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 the use of that building. If it's a commercial building that have a very heavy traffic, mm -hmm. then you can scale up the percentage. Oh, Just right. to ensure that the safety of the people are sure is kept and that we maintain standard whichever yes. way it is anyway we have we do not have time anymore to continue <laughs> this conversation <laughs> but uh, we must thank you olale Akiomi, president international facility management association uh, lagos nigeria chapter for your time on the program thank, thank you so much thank you very much i believe our viewers have been educated with regards to what safety is about this is where we'll have to end the conversation this morning uh, thank you so much for being a part of the show but uh, remember life itself is a story a recollection of events that shape one's journey on earth do you want to share parts of these stories with us on your view this will enable people to share in your experience and learn valuable life lessons from them you can also get answers to troubling questions and possible solutions to any challenge you are facing. You can do this anonymously or otherwise. Send such touching stories to us on your view at tvccommunications.tv. Tell us your story today. Share your burning issues with us on your view on TVC. Thank you so much, ladies, for being a part of the show. Thank you, everyone, for Bye. being a part of the show. We'll see you on